All right, I am about to start solving the 2024 AP Calculus exam of free response questions. I forgot to fire up my calculator, so that's going to come up in a minute. I have not read the questions yet, so you're going to watch me read these in real time and process them instead of giving you a rehearsed answer. And so uh, if I make a mistake, let me know. I'm sure you will. People love correcting people on the Internet. So here's number one. This is a, a common question with A, B, and B, C. See, we have a table, it talks about the temperature of coffee. My calculator just covered up the question. Um, and let me see, let me zoom in so I can read this a little bit better. All right, so temperature of coffee at T minutes is a decreasing differentiable function C. C is measured in Celsius, around the interval from zero to 12. Values of C are given in a table, approximate C prime of five using the average value or average rate of change. Okay, so A is a pretty straightforward question. Question A, C prime of five is going to be approximately, and we're going to say, see five is between three and seven. They tell you to do the average rate of change from three to seven. So that would be approximately C of seven minus C of five over seven minus five, uh, which would be C of seven is 69. Nice. C of five, C of five, uh, C of three. What am I doing here? C of three is 85 over seven minus three. And you can stop right there. It says show the work that leads to your answer and include units of measure. So in the numerator, we subtracted degrees of, in Celsius and in the denominator, we subtracted minutes. So our unit would be degree Celsius per minute. And I believe that's C, 16 minus that'd be negative 16 over four, which is negative four, I believe. I probably could use my calculator but I'm not going to because I'm lazy right now. And if I were doing this truly on the AP exam, I might simplify it, but then I'll cross those out just in case I made an arithmetic mistake. And there's your answer. Make sure you do show a difference quotient in your setup for that one. Number B, let's see what we have here. Use a left ream on some with three intervals indicated by the table to approximate the value of this integral. So the antiderivative from zero to 12 of C of T dt would be approximately, approximately, and let's see, a left Riemann sum. So my first delta t is 3, and I'm using the function values on the left side. So 3 times 100 plus, now I go from 4 to 7, that's a delta t of 4. There's the base of your rectangle, the height of the rectangle would be 85, the left side function value. And then from 7 to 12, that is a delta x of 5, and then the height is 69. Nice. Um, and you can stop there. Uh, then it says to interpret the meaning of one twelfth of that antiderivative. Uh, I am just for curiosity going to punch that in my calculator here. So I use the TI Inspire, uh, and so that was what that was three times one hundred plus uh, four times eighty five plus five times sixty nine, and I'm getting nine hundred eighty five. For that, so let me go back to my work here. So I'm sitting, getting 985 again. If you simplify that, I'm going to put a line for that just in case I fat fingered something in the calculator. Then it says to interpret the meaning of this. So 1 12th of that integral, 0 to 12 of C of T dt is, and I'm going to type this out because it's faster for me to type and more easily read. So is, and let's go with blue. I like to use blue. All right, is. Okay, now that is your average value theorem. So you need to recognize that 1 12th out front as the average value. So this is the average value of the function C of t, um, which is um, the average, and I'm going to erase the word value, the average temperature of the coffee in the cup in degrees Celsius. Is that how you spell Celsius? That looks better. In degrees Celsius. Um, on the interval 0 less than t less than 12 um, and just to see if this is a reasonable approximation by the way that is the average temperature of the coffee and the cup degrees celsius i like that answer i like that answer now i'm going to very quickly i'm going to do 985 divided by 12 just to satisfy some curiosity so 985 divided by 12 get the decimal approximation and I should get something that represents the average of the data. I'm getting 82.083 and I'm looking at my data. I have values of 185, 69 and 55. And I think 82 is a reasonable average for the set of data that I have. So I really like my answers 
so far. I'm not going to write that down. Notice they asked us to interpret the meaning of that uh, integral 1 12th from 0 to 12. They didn't ask you to actually evaluate it. So, so I'm not going to bother with the evaluation of it. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to answer questions that are not asked. All right, so number C, from 12 to 20. From 12 to 20, uh, let's see, the, the rate of change of temperature is modeled by that. So they're giving you a derivative C prime or C prime special degrees Celsius per minute. Find the temperature of the coffee at time 20. So we want the actual temperature of the coffee. We want C of 20. And we have, um, see, that's from 12 to 20. We have a, a condition at 12. We know that C of 12 is 55, and that's from the from the table. And if I want the actual temperature of the, of the coffee, this is great. We have the rate of change. Uh, we have the first derivative and we have an initial condition. So C of 20 is going to be C of 12 plus the antiderivative from 12 to 20 of C prime of T, which they gave us. And I'm going to go straight to my calculator and punch that in. So I have 55 plus uh, antiderivative shift plus 12 to 20 of that ugly function, control, divide. Maybe I should have stored this. 24.55 e to the 0 0.01 t all over t dt. I'm double checking that to make sure I punched everything in there correctly. It is 12 to 20, negative 24.55 e to the 0 0.01 t over t. Yeah, that all looks good. Control enter. And I have a temperature of 43.40.329. 40.329. So far, I like this question. It's so really wordy. The, the presentation of this problem is intimidating. It takes up an entire page here. But uh, so far, I think this is a nice question. I like this question. Uh, number D, for the model in part C, it can be shown that the second derivative is that determine whether the temperature of the coffee is changing at a decreasing or an increasing rate. This is a um this is a second derivative if something is changing we're talking about the slope we're talking about the derivative already and we want to know if that if the change is increasing or decreasing so we need to know is the second derivative positive or negative and wow we're looking over an interval it's not at a point so we're trying to determine if the second derivative is positive or negative from 12 to 20. we should probably start by finding when the second derivative is equal to zero because any positive and negative intervals will be broken up at the zero. So I'm going to find out when the second derivative is equal to zero on the interval 12 to 20. So I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to go to my graph screen. And my second derivative is this. It is 0 0.2455 e to the 0 0.1 t times 100 minus t. Oh, I can't use t's in my graph screen. Let's use x's. Go back to x's there over x squared. So 0.2455e to the 0.01x, I messed that up, times 100 minus x all over x squared. I'm going to hit enter, and I need to change my window because we're only interested in what's happening from 12 to 20. So window settings, 12 to 20. And I'm, I anticipate this to always be possible. Okay, um, and so there are no zeros on the interval 12 to 20. So no zeros on the interval 12 to 20. Um, and I can tell by looking at this graph that if I uh, evaluate the second derivative at any of those values, I'm just going to say C double prime of 15. And I can tell that that graph is above the x-axis. My second derivative is positive. So I'm just going to make a note here that C double prime of 15 is something positive. Therefore, I'm going to go back to typing. Therefore, the temperature of the coffee is changing at an increasing rate because C double prime, C double prime of, of T is greater than zero for all T, T, 12 less than T less than 20. And I believe I have sufficiently answered this question. That is all four parts. I think that's a nice first question. Very wordy, very wordy. And people get intimidated by that. So if this scored low, it's because you got scared by the presentation of it. The questions themselves were quite nice. So there is a uh, question number one from the 2024 AB and BC exam. Uh, any mistakes you see, let me know. And we will uh, 
I don't know. I guess I won't come back and fix it. But there's my answers.